Hello film fans and welcome to this episode of The Shilokian. Now if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll probably be thinking, what on earth is he doing this week? He's looking at a documentary? Doesn't he normally look at like detective shows or thrillers and stuff? But I have a younger brother who is absolutely obsessed with dinosaurs, so Tobes, this episode is for you and I hope you enjoy it. However, there is another reason why I'm looking at this and it's because I kind of admire what David Attenborough, John Favreau and the team behind Prehistoric Planet have decided to do. You see, I must admit to being a bit cynical about such you know, documentaries about dinosaurs. Whether you are a creationist or an evolutionist, whether you believe the world was thousands of years old, billions, billions, the actual fossil record for most dinosaurs is quite small compared to the number of years you're looking at. So most of the stuff that we think as fact about dinosaurs is actually mainly just educated guesswork. Now that's not to say that it's stupid or even wrong, but without a time machine we're never going to be able to fully know every single little detail about dinosaurs in general. I remember that when Kenneth Branagh's uh, Walking with Dinosaurs came out, you probably remember it's a very famous epic BBC show. At the time I think it was the most expensive series the BBC ever had done. I remember that Branner and the team received quite a lot of criticism and people said wow I think you'll find that the Velociraptor would never have acted in that way that you've shown in your film Mr Branner. I think that's a bit of an error and Branner responded by saying well prove that it isn't true. Now obviously that's a slightly dodgy argument I mean it wouldn't stand up in a court of law there is a reason why well, you know people are innocent before being proved guilty and not the other way around but nevertheless it does highlight one of the difficulties of doing shows about dinosaurs. There's so many theories some of them pertinent, some of them not, and it's just very difficult to, you know, to try and give a kind of factual narrative as if there was a film crew there when we don't know exactly what happened. And this has led some dinosaur shows to sort of go in a very scientific manner. They'll show you a clip of animation about a dinosaur doing something and then they'll show you the scientific evidence behind it. I think the most famous example of this is probably Dinosaur Planet where they would you know, have an animation of an animal like a Spinosaurus doing something and then they would show you the scientific evidence to back it up almost to try and cover themselves which is a perfectly reasonable way of doing it but I really like the way Prehistoric Planet have gone. They've gone for the more walking with dinosaurs approach as if there was a film crew actually there and I think it's a very clever way of shooting it. They've obviously got David Attenborough to voice it, despite the fact he's well into his 90s. And he gives that kind of gravitas and authority behind it. And the way they've shot it, shot it obviously because it's animated, but it looks as if there was a film crew there. But not only that, it actually has the same style of some programs like Planet Earth. And it doesn't surprise me that quite a lot of the directors of Planet Earth are also directors of this. It's very cleverly done. Now, I think this is probably one of the first mainstream adaptions of that kind of faux documentary format that shows kind of feathery dinosaurs, which is a very interesting concept. I mean, it is still, you know, quite hotly debated as to, you know, whether you know dinosaurs had feathers, whether they were feather like substances or whether they had scales. And it's all very complicated and not being a paleontologist or an expert, I'm not prepared to give my own opinion, really, because it's probably entirely wrong. But I do like the way that they have gone wholeheartedly for this approach. Now, do I know whether baby T-Rexes had feathers? No. As it shows you in that, you know, famous sneak peek where it has the baby T-Rex running around chasing turtles. I've no idea. I haven't got a time machine. I haven't been back to check. But it is really, really cute and it's shot so beautifully. And I could quite imagine that baby T-Rexes, you know, would, had they come across baby turtle, chase them. You know, it seems reasonably likely and it looks good. It's shot brilliantly and the animation is absolutely fantastic. Unlike, say, Walking with Dinosaurs, when you could tell, particularly, you know, with modern eyes, obviously, um, especially after the modern advances in CGI, you can tell that they're not actually there. I mean, it's very good for the time and I still enjoy watching Walking with Dinosaurs, despite the fact that some of the things they show is now been exploded as scientific theories about dinosaurs it still looks good and Kenneth Branagh does a fantastic voiceover for it you know he's got that very you know gravelly kind of authoritative voice very similar to David Attenborough in fact but you can tell obviously that it's not actually real this some of the shots in it you could almost believe are it's very very good especially the close-up stuff I think some of the things over water particularly with the marine life you can tell aren't quite real. It's, I think it's the difficulty of trying to have things interact with water. Obviously when you know things move through water the light 
um, refracts off the surface of the water as it moves. And it's, I think it's still a bit of a challenge with sort of CGI companies to try and create that effect. Obviously, it's getting better, but you can still, there's something in your brain that kind of says, oh, that's not quite right. It's still a little bit uncanny valley, similar with, you know, Luke Skywalker's face in The Mandalorian. But I did really enjoy from the trailer, particularly some of the um, epic sweeping shots, that they could genuinely have been real. I mean, if you'd said, oh no, the, the prehistoric planet team, they had, a, you know, access to advanced time travel technology, they were back there with their cameras filming away, I would, well, I wouldn't have believed it, because it would have been on the news, but I could almost believe it. It's that good. And it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, I particularly like just some of the very little shots. Most of the time in dinosaur documentaries, they like to show, you know, really big epic things like the T-Rex taking down a dinosaur and ripping its throat out and the exciting stuff. But I really like the way they took care to focus on really small things, like just, for instance, that shot in the trailer of the T-Rex's footprint in the sand and the water coming in and gently sweeping it away. That that was a really beautiful shot. And also, I like the fact they've also seemed to have focused on really small dinosaurs in a similar way to the fact that in, say, planet Earth, they'll focus, you know, quite extended sequence, say, on, you know, a toad or something, you know, doing something interesting. You know, they don't just show, you know, lions taking down zebras, even though they do show that as well, because obviously it's exciting, but that's generally the climax. The other thing I liked, even though I'm not exactly sure, I mean, I probably should have checked before doing this video, but I'm not entirely sure what evidence they've got, the fact that T-Rexes had extended families like it seems to be um, shown in the trailer. But I really like the idea of exploring it. I mean, it might be complete rubbish. But it looks good and it'll be exciting and interesting to explore. And the, the shot of the T-Rex swimming is really, really clever. It's, and then the way it moves, the camera moves up through the surface and you see the baby T-Rexes swimming alongside it. It is really beautiful. It's really clever. I mean, I don't know what we we're expected to think the cameraman was actually doing. <laughs> was he swimming alongside them? Brave bloke if he was. <laughs> but it's just a really beautiful shot. So, yeah, uh, the thing that does make me laugh, I have to say, you know, is the fact they've clearly, um, obviously, you know, it's the Planet Earth team doing it. And they've clearly used their experience of you know, the natural world today uh, to try and create some of the concepts. So, for instance, you see in one of the shots um, a pterosaur flying alongside other pterosaurs that are, I think are probably nesting. And I presume, don't know this for a fact, but I assume that that pterosaur is trying to steal the eggs or the young from the other pterosaurs. And obviously that's a kind of staple wildlife cameraman shot from seabird colonies today. You see it all the time. So clearly they just juxtaposed the same scene with dinosaurs. But it's the kind of scene that I could imagine would probably have happened. You know, it's a very small jump to make that dinosaurs wouldn't, well, I know pterosaurs aren't dinosaurs, but that dinosaur-like creatures wouldn't have acted in a similar kind of way. So yeah, I really enjoyed the trailer. I mean, I've watched it quite a few times just because it's so pretty. And I would definitely be really up for watching the proper series when it comes out. I think it's going to be really good. It may turn out, obviously, I mean, David Attenborough seems to be fairly fit at the moment. But, you know, he is getting on and it may turn out to end up being his swan song, which would be, I mean, really nice. I mean, it would be quite fitting in a way. You know, the man that brought colour to BBC Two, who, you know, modernised television, essentially. You know, his swan song, um, his magnum opus, if you like, the last thing he does it involves, you know, computer generated imagery and you know, recreations of, you know, a world that may or may not have existed a long time ago. But it's, you know, captured the imagination that started way back when television first came out, you know, when they couldn't simply have imagined doing something like that, when computers were still in their infancy. You know, it almost moves you in a way, the sort of the sweep of history that this man has been a part of. I mean, I'm a huge David Attenborough fan and I hope he stays around for a very long time in the future. But should, you know, perish the thought he die in the near future, it would be a very fitting end to a great career of a great naturalist. So, yeah, that was the Sherlockian. Thanks very much for watching, film fans, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.